Tonight is the Feast of the Epiphany, and for us Episcopalians, that's one of the biggies, right up there with Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, and All Saints. This is the night when we celebrate the wise men finding the child Jesus under the guidance of the star. And you probably already know that those wise men did not show up on Christmas night, even though they're almost always right there in everyone's nativity sets. Now, the way Matthew's Gospel reads, it was most likely a couple of years later. Jesus was probably a toddler, and that whole thing with the manger was in the distant past by then. Usually, on every epiphany, we focus on the wise men, what it means that these magi, these non-Jewish astrologers, found the Jewish Messiah and paid him homage. Or we talk about the star, that star of wonder, star of night, and the strange miracle by which it led them to Jesus. But a good friend of mine always says that when we read the Bible, don't just keep your eye on the human characters, even if they seem like they're the ones doing all the moving and the shaking. Instead, keep your eyes on God. Or, if it's a story with Jesus, keep your eyes on Him. Because when you look for the actions of God or Jesus in Scripture, you learn to do it in your own life, too. So this year, Epiphany is not about the wise men. And it's not about the star. Tonight, as it always really was, is about Jesus. So what is Jesus doing in this story? Well, Jesus is at home. He's being a sometimes delightful, sometimes rambunctious, probably always into everything toddler. And he is doing that at home. We never think of Jesus at home. As a baby, he was in a stable. As a man, he was always on the go. As a savior, he now reigns in heaven. And honestly, I don't think most of us think of Jesus as being in our homes either. I mean, sure, we know he's everywhere. He's right here with you right now. But if I were to ask you where you find Jesus in your daily life, you're much more likely to say church or nature or with friends or loved ones or a dozen other places before you actually name your own home. Am I right? But here's the thing. We've all been stuck primarily at home for the last 10 months. And the thing that has come to my mind over and over and over is this. Epiphany. Jesus with us at home. We forget that Jesus lived like us. We forget that Jesus blessed a home with his presence. He did it as a child growing up, and even as an adult always on the go, he entered other people's homes and blessed them too. He ate at people's tables. He taught in people's living rooms. He raised people's loved ones from their deathbeds. On Epiphany, there's this ancient custom of blessing chalk, which people then take home and use to write a little blessing over the main doorway to their homes. Don't get too excited. It's not magic. There's no hocus pocus here. But the reason we do that at this time of year in particular is to remind us that Jesus is always at home with us, always blessing us, always our most important guest. Jesus is always home. So tonight, we will, as always, bless the chalk. Then, any time this week, you can swing by the Ministry Center drive through where you can pick up a piece of that chalk. You'll find it there in the food collection box. Take it home with a liturgy and mark your door. And if you do, send us photos. We'd love to see and share lots of doorways blessed and ready for our most important guest. In all this talk of Jesus at home, though, don't get me wrong. I am beyond ready for the virus to be behind us and for us to be back together at church. There is no substitute for the body of Christ gathering together for worship and sacrament and prayer on the Lord's Day every week, and that will return. But in the meantime, maybe one of the few blessings of this pandemic has been the reminder that of all the places Jesus can be, He's also right there with you at your table 
in your living room, in your home. Truth is, he always was.